This is a brand new investigative video into Moscow, Idaho, filled with explosions. If you want to learn more about the Idaho 4 and Brian Koberger, you're in the right place. Without further ado, let's see what I have to say for myself this time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always, except for when Baby Drip fills in for me. And I know you love when Baby Drip fills in for me. Anyways, let's just start this video off explosively because you know I'm known for booms. Yes, I created quite the buzz on YouTube with the booms. And now all of your favorite creators say it. Anyways, check out this explosion. I have recently obtained a higher resolution image of the alleged doorknob that leads to the alleged secret passageway, aka the basement, aka the tunnel, aka we don't know what it is. I previously showed you the best image I had and it was blurry. I questioned the authenticity of it. And now look what we have here. This image has been scrubbed from all of the internet. Well, not exactly all of it, because now we have it right here in Crime Circus in front of millions and millions and millions of eyeballs. Shout out to each and every single one of you and your eyeballs. Yeah. What do we see here? What are we looking at? I'm going to give you a little perspective so you know exactly where in the house you're looking at this image. Right here. The lower right bedroom. This was allegedly being used as a storage room. This is where we all saw those golf clubs in the crack of the window blinds when the police officer was being a peeping pervert. Stupid fucking idiots. Stupid fucking idiots. Yeah, right here. What secrets does this room hold? And why was the FBI re-investigating the house after I released my explosive videos talking about the tunnels? I literally made multiple videos saying that house holds clues that need to be investigated. And then right after I said it, the FBI decides to go into the house and investigate and look for more clues. Yeah. Whoa. You know that's a boom, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Other creators take note. This is how you find booms. You have to look. You have to look deep into the imagery and you have to look at the bigger picture in these things. You can't just look at a picture for what it is. You have to see what's hidden within the pictures. Just like when Moscow PD was looking for any and all evidence of students' pictures. They said they weren't going to look for what was happening within the foreground of the photo, but maybe something happening in the back of the photo. Yeah, so you could say we're doing some advanced police department investigative research here. But no affiliation, of course. This is independent. Just me and you. Universally worldwide. Yeah, we are. So, you're gonna have to leave me a comment down below. What does this mean? Is that a doorknob? Or isn't it a doorknob? And how come this image specifically was taken down from all realtor websites, but the rest of the photos were left up for a while? They've pretty much all been removed now at this point. But this photo was really, 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 really hard to find. And one of my viewers actually sent it to me because I have really, really, really good viewers that send me tips all the time. Informants, clue givers, helpers, button clickers. Together here at Crime Circus, we are the hive mind. We learn from each other and we give each other clues. And we don't even need to name names because you know who you are. Thank you. Anyways, you like explosions? Well, let's go to explosion number two in this video. Let's revisit this famous video of Maddie, Kaylee, and Jack all leaving Corner Club walking up the street. I previously showed you the rubber legs. Some of you said she was just being silly. Well, guess what? Silly doesn't give you rubber legs and human legs don't bend that way. No, 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 no. Legs don't bend that way, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry. And just to give you a quick reminder on that, look at this. You'd have to have triple joints in your kneecaps for your leg to swing that way. 
I dare you to try it and upload it to TikTok if you're able to. Maybe that'll be a new TikTok challenge if you're foolish enough to have the TikTok app because that is spyware and a virus. RIP to you if you have that. Sorry, not sorry. So check this out. That was the beginning of the video. Maybe we can get a better understanding if we look at the ending of that video. Well, why don't you tell me? What did you see there? Anything of relevance? Anything noteworthy? Anything worth investigating? Or nothing? Let's take another look. I'm going to slow it down this time. We see this black metal pipe here, some type of railing or parking meter or something of the sort. I don't know. But what we do know, it's visible when it shouldn't be visible. When Kaylee walks in front of it, we shouldn't be able to see what's behind Kaylee unless Kaylee is invisible. Do we have any reason to believe Kaylee possessed invisibility powers? No, no, we don't. Let's take another look. Also, why does Kaylee's head double in size, but her two friends don't? Jack and Maddie's heads remain the exact same size. So, Kaylee's head doubles in size, gets taller, and the black pipe shows up in front of her when we shouldn't be able to see it. Boom. Remember, I previously let you know about NASA and Disney helping out in Delphi, Indiana with the bridge guy. The cartoonish bridge video that they released. Because that's what those two companies do. Disney and NASA does animations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know where this video came from or who had their hand in it before it was released to us. We don't know if this video is authentic or not, and we don't know who did any sort of funny editing to it. But I know you shouldn't be able to see a black pipe in front of a human being if the black pipe is behind the human being. No. And heads can't double in size unless you have some sort of shape-shifting abilities. Ladies and gentlemen, this investigation has gotten crazy. You know it has. And the craziest thing is, I'm not the crazy one. I'm not the one just making these things up. These are authentic videos as I found them from official sources, such as the mainstream media. This is what they presented us, and we are investigating the clues because each and every clue could and should be very important. And nothing gets past us here. Nothing, nothing. Some of you out there even like to look for reflections in windows in parking lots very observant of you. So, so, so super observant. I haven't seen any reflections myself just yet, but maybe I'll go looking very soon because I'd love to see some reflections. I just hope it's not like looking for faces in clouds because I can't ever see any. Anyways, let's see what Maddie Mogan has to say for herself. All right, can you hear me, Maddie? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Do you live at 1122 uh, Queen Street? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, well, well. Did you hear that? Is there any doubt now what the address was? I told you what it was. And now the previous tenant and the victim has told you what it was. Thank you so much for speaking from the grave, Maddie Mogan. RIP, we appreciate you. One, one, two, two, Queen Road. Yes, I do. So why do they keep telling us it's King Road? That's something to consider. It's something to think about. Why, oh, why would they do this to us? If the address is what it is, why don't they just tell us the real address for this real crime? Maybe I should get the angel wing tattoo as a little memorial piece, as a little RIP to Maddie. What do you think? Comment down below if you think that would look good on me. And if so, should I get it just above my elbow like she did? We need to know. Also, I feel it's my duty and obligation to let you know there is a lot of disinfo agents working behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, so on and so forth, etc. in this case. 
people that want to deceive you, people that will put out false information. Sometimes it'll be the commenters, sometimes it'll be the YouTubers themselves. You really can't trust anybody in this case. Some of the things I've seen, super sus, red flags, red alerts, everything I see, it's sus to us. For example, some misinformed people try to stir up things in the comments section. Pay them no mind. They're only there to deceive you, rile you up, and to question your core beliefs. For example, some people are convinced BK's family knows he did it. No, that's not true. That's tabloid information coming from third parties. His family has made no statements of any kind saying their son or brother is guilty. Hasn't happened. Also worth mentioning, many of you are so confused. Maddie Mogan's ID was not found in Brian Koberger's parents' house in a glove in a box. An ID was found in a glove in a box, and you don't know whose ID it was. It was probably his own ID. I've got all kinds of IDs and all kinds of miscellaneous places in my home, and they're mostly all mine. No victims of any kind. Thank you. If they really had that kind of evidence against Brian Koberger, he wouldn't even be defendable. If you found a victim's ID in his parents' house, boom, boom, yeah. He'd be guilty and I would tell you he's guilty because we don't defend guilty people here. No. Brian Koberger's attorney, Ann Taylor, is a University of Idaho alumni graduate. She certainly wouldn't defend a cold-blooded monster who passed away for university students. You know how bad that would be on her conscience and how bad that would be for her reputation in that small little area? It'd be pretty bad. Ann Taylor has said there was no connection between her client and the victims. And do we believe her? Yeah, we do. Do we know of Ann Taylor to be a liar? No. No, we don't. She seems like an upstanding, honest woman. For being a public defender, she seems pretty good. Hopefully she's not double-crossing her own client and playing for the other side. We can only hope for the best right now. Because Brian Koberger's family is so poor, they can't even afford private counsel. And for a case like this, you certainly would hope you could get some private counsel. But he's got a public pretender. But this is a winnable case for her because there is no evidence that I've seen. If evidence exists, that would be news to me. If the prosecution wants to talk about octillions, well, then maybe we should start talking about reptilians. Yeah. And for those of you that know, you know. Shout out to you and your knowledge. If you're not aware of the reptilians, well, hang around Crime Circus long enough and maybe we'll talk about it. And I want to let you know out there, this investigation is only getting started. So if they do pass me away or try to frame me, you know I didn't do it. And you know I did this with a good heart, good intentions. That's the only reason to ever do anything in this life. If you have bad intentions when you're doing things, seek therapy and seek church ASAP. And a very brief reminder, I'm doing this for the victims and the victims' families because they really do deserve a thorough, proper investigation from people that don't have any skin in the game, so to speak. <laughs> We don't have any agenda one way or the other, unlike some certain other people. And shout out to some of the tipsters that have sent me some explosive details that I just don't have time to talk about today. This goes to the tip top. We're talking islands in the Caribbean, private jets, mansions, some really wild things. And we're talking millions and even billions of dollars on the line. Yeah. This is serious, ladies and gentlemen, and you really need to start taking this investigation a lot more serious. People passed away. College students passed away. A fraternity bro and sorority sisters. Don't their lives matter? If you don't think so, please start acting like it because they do. This case is the most important thing in all of our lives. And that's why we do this. And we will never stop doing this until we have answers. And then we should probably move on. Unless you don't want to ever move on. And we'll talk about Moscow, Idaho forever. And yeah, I'm at high risk discussing these various items of interest. But how pathetic would that be if I chose not to? I literally have to. And yeah, Baby Drip responding to you in the comments. That's official. Yeah. Shout out to Baby Drip.
In closing, I have something a little extra special for you, a little bonus clip. I've slightly altered the audio to avoid copyright issues. Check this out. What do you think of that? There is the surviving roommate partying it up with the two girls who happen to look very similar to Maddie and Kaylee R.I.P. And there also appears to be some underage drinking happening once again. Oh my God. Boom. I'm not so sure I could be partying like that after my roommates croaked, but to each his own. I guess we all grieve a little differently. Yeah. Anyways, please consider helping support the show. Link to my Patreon down below. Free or paid, the free tier, there's really no strings attached. You will get notifications for all my upcoming releases, so you don't have to rely on YouTube because I know YouTube probably won't notify you. You can also become a YouTube member. Shout out to you if you choose to do that. I appreciate it. And if I ever disappear off this platform, please come looking for me on Patreon. Your support goes a long way and I appreciate you forever and ever and ever and ever. Thank you so much. Anyways, I'll be back again soon with more explosive investigative material. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.